Hi, Kiki. Hi. Uh, this is Tom from you know I got soul dot com. Okay, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? All right, thank you. What you got for me today? <laughs> thank you for taking the time for the interview. First of all, appreciate it. Oh, no problem. And, and before we start, I just want to let you know. Um, you know, last year we did a top twenty-five songs on our site, and we picked your song "So Confused" in our top twenty-five. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, first question. You know, you're going to be releasing your your third album, "Unbelievable," next month. Uh, how'd you choose right. the title for the album? Um, it was kind of like a mixed decision. Um, I let my fans on my website pick, and um, also on my label. And uh, that's what we all came up with. Yeah. Just um, it's a, it's a song that I have on the album called "Unbelievable." Yeah. And we just thought that you know that would be a good song for the album yeah. name. Okay. Because you know, hey, I'm unbelievable. I'm yeah. blessed. I was favored by Christ, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, my life is unbelievable now. Or before it was crappy and horrible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now it's, it's, um, it's happy. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. And, you know, how does this album compare to your previous albums? Um, well, my last album that I put out, Who Knew, was just like, um, uh, re I guess, just to say that I'm still here. Mm -hmm. You know, and just gave my fans something to listen to because they just kept asking, you know, for something to listen to. And so, so I said, okay, let me put some songs out. Yeah. So that was pretty much just a, um, reintroducing myself to everybody and, uh, you know, fans who don't really get to hear much of me. Mm -hmm. But, um, my first album, you know, that was thrown together. Yeah. Uh, -oh. uh yeah, that was like a guinea pig album and I sold um platinum, so I guess that was good. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. But this one here I think is better, um, one, because I have more say so in it too. Mm -hmm. It's um the real me, it's not the guinea pig me. Yeah. And uh, it's not something that was just thrown together like the last album. It was thought out carefully. And, um, you know, songs chosen by myself and the label mm -hmm. and my team. So. Okay, cool. Um, tell me about the first single, Saturday Love, you know, the cover of the classic. How did you choose to, um, you know, cover that song? It's just, just a fun record yeah. uh, for me and Ruben to do because he and I have been wanting to do something for a long time. Oh, okay. And so I um, had a call from my lawyer saying, Kiki, you got to do this song, you know, I love this song, and you got to do it as a favor to me. And so I called Ruben and I said, hey, dude, I got a song for me and you to do. And so I thought, all right, I'm game. So we yeah. did it. And I think it sounds great. Um, there's been people saying on the blog that it's full of auto-tune and there's not even any auto tune on the song. Oh, wow. I think it's funny. Um, maybe just on the sun, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, uh, but just to make it sound, you know, more retro and, and fun because that was a retro song. And so that's about it. But like on my vocals, my lead vocals, people yeah. were trying to say that we have auto tune all over it. And I'm like, no. They're just, we're just people who can actually sing on key. Yeah. Jeez. You know, and I, it's just a really good microphone. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> so, people, people, you know, I feel like people go are always going to hate on, on some, and whenever you touch a classic, people are just going to hate just because, you know. Yeah, and a lot of people say, you know, Kiki and Ruben both can sing, but some things shouldn't be touched. And I'm yeah. like, well, who gives a shit? Yeah. You know, it was just something fun to do. Mm -hmm. I like the song, so I wanted to hear me on it. Yeah. You know, and it sounds good. Yeah, I like it. So, I like what you did with it. Thank you. People just need to, you know, and I think it's the older people who are probably fans of the original singer, you know, which, yeah. you know, is fine, but keep the comments to yourself if there's going to be some smart stuff, you know? Yeah. I hate, I hate when people do that. Don't hate. No, I agree. Because it sounds good. 
said, uh, and I'm not one to be like, oh, yeah, I'm this and I'm that. No, I'm not that at all. But I tell mm. you, that song is cute, and I do sound good, and so does Wilbur. Yeah, definitely. Period. Mm-hmm. Period. Point blank. I agree. I and agree. Some, and songs can be touched. I'm sure one day somebody's going to remake My First Love again and yeah. Nothing in This World, which is original. Yeah. You know, which is fine with me. I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm eager to see what somebody's going to do, somebody else can do with uh, Nothing in This World. Hopefully it'll be one of my kids. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be All cool. Right. Um, I want to ask you about another song. I, you know, I read in your bio you have another song on the album with Tweet and with Kelly Price, a collaboration of you guys. You know, tell me about that one. Um, that song is, is called Mirror. It's just about um, a female that she's singing to the mirror and she's basically singing to herself to other her and basically saying, you know, I'm trying to leave this guy, this craziness, but, you know, you keep pulling me back in, and you said that, you know, this was the last time, but I'm looking at myself in the mirror, still abused, still bruised, and mm-hmm. full of pain, and that song, we've all pretty much been through that at some point in our life, and we just came together to do the song as, you know, great singing females. Mm-hmm. We want to sing a song together and sound good, and we've all experienced something along those lines. So, yes, okay, I yeah. definitely look forward to hearing that one. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, what else can we expect to find on the album in terms of you know who are some producers you worked with? You know, some writers. Um, J.R. Hudson. Um, I have uh, Shep. Crawford on there okay. who did the um I yep. remember that yeah of course I'm supposed to be here. Yep. that he's done all kinds of Kelly Price songs like uh everybody that has like a banging um ballad he's he's done mm-hmm. um I, I work with him uh Steve Morales he's done um all kinds of Christina Aguilera songs, Bruce Spears songs. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know those are like white pop songs, but he can like do the R and B thing. Yeah. And his brother Hesu, okay. he did um, the track for my favorite song on the album, which is a song that I wrote. And uh, he's just as talented as his brother. Mm-hmm. So, with a younger twist to it. Okay. But um. Mm-hmm. Cool. Among others. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I was also reading in your bio that you're slated to tape a reality show pilot coming up with uh, you know a few other artists, Faith Evans, Selena Johnson. Tweet. Well, no, it's not a pilot. Oh, it's okay. not a pilot. It's, it's going to be an actual... Oh, so it's actually going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, tell me yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Faith Evans isn't going to be on screen. She's behind the scene. Mm-hmm. Like, she's going to be like part of the the producing part of it and um it's going to be me nikki gilbert from brownstone uh selena johnson it's going to be a tweet i think kelly price um uh, who else um angie stone did i already say angie stone no you didn't yet okay yeah angie stone and lily from swv so it's 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 basically uh, going into our lives and showing that, you know, we're not only um, singers of R&B, but we're also mothers, we're also wives. Um, you know, we have real lives and we, we lead lives but like regular women do. You know, we'd be in the store grocery shopping and our baby just decides to want to poop everywhere and <laughs> crap us down, you know, or throw up yeah. all over us while we're right in the middle of the crowded grocery shop. Yeah. You know, and, and at the same time, people are like, oh, my God, how you doing? I'm like, I can have your autograph. Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you an autograph with shit all over the front of my clothes. <laughs> you know? But, I mean, it just, wow. it's going to be like that showing that we go through the regular stuff. We argue with our spouses. We love our spouses. We have happy days, down days. Um, you know. Mm-hmm. Homework and everything else. Got to go to school meetings, yeah. like everybody else. Okay, that'll be interesting. 
Yeah. Um, now, if I could, I'd like to take you back a little earlier in your career because, you know, I love to get the history behind some of the music. And, um, you know, yeah. I was wondering, how did you originally link up with the producer Steve Huff, you know, back then? I've been knowing Steve Huff since I was, like, 13 years old. And, um, we just started working together. It was funny because I started demoing, like, his, um, songs to his tracks. And his, all his songs started getting placed mm -hmm. with my demos on it. And so he was like, well, hell, we might as well put you on some and start shopping you. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... He introduced me to Avant, mm -hmm. which I know him as Myron. Um, <laughs> yeah. Then, and uh, he decided to, um, you know, put his little project to work, and so he got signed and everything. And he asked me to record uh, my first love. Uh -huh. And when I recorded my first love, um, he had it on his album or whatever, and. It blew up, and yeah. so that he and I blew up. Yeah. He had another song out before that separated, yeah. and it did okay. But when my first love came out, it just blew up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely did. So Steve Puff is very talented. Yeah, cool. but he um he used to play bass for R. Kelly and was really good friends with R. Kelly, and um did quite a bit of uh, tracks for R. Kelly. Of course, R. Kelly will never let that be known because he <laughs> wants all the credit, which yeah. is fine, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, he, and he's, he's an important part of a lot of R. Kelly stuff. Interesting. He played a major role. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Yvonne. Um, I read in an interview you did last year that you two would possibly were going to get together for a duets album. Is that was that ever was that just a rumor? Or would that ever happen? No, no, it wasn't a rumor. Oh. I really would like to have that happen. I also want to try it with Ruben too. Oh, okay. Maybe just an album full of, um, you know, just do like a throwback album, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of remakes or something. But I, I want to do like with Avant do like 12 tracks, do like six original and six um, remakes. There's so many uh, duet songs out there. Like, I don't understand why there aren't duets out anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like an actual duet group. Mm -hmm. I, don't under, I don't know why. Now, I know um, Kindred Family Soul, like yeah. they're, they're a married couple and they do it, but it's really not Tammy Terrell and um, uh, oh lord, <laughs> from Jenner O'Neill, and then like the Renee and Angela Wynn, but like they're not out anymore. Nobody's doing that no more, and yep. people like to hear stuff like that. Yeah. So I really, yeah. That's a good point. That's interesting. I, I'd like to do that again. Yeah, that'd be cool if you guys end up, did end up doing that. Yeah, I mean, I like my own individual artist now. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. like Kiki Wyatt by herself because I can hold my own. But at the same time, you know, I, I happen to blow up off of a duet. Yeah. People love Kiki Wyatt and Avant or Avant and Kiki Wyatt, however you want to say it, or Avant and that girl that mm -hmm. sings Avant. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like it, honestly. Yeah. No, I like it too. I think other other people do too. That's why both my first love and nothing in this world was on top ten. So I can't tell you how long yeah. to get two <laughs> duets at the same time playing on the radio. Mm -hmm. I'll be driving down the street and flip the station because I want to hear my first love and nothing in this world be on. I'm like, dang, I'm, I want to hear somebody else. I won't hear me. Yeah. So people people really love it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I want to ask you now. You know, between your your debut album and then the Who Knew album, you know, you had a couple of scrapped albums in between, and it was like a long, you know, gap between yeah. you had actually released albums, you know, to the public. So, w was that like a discouraging, you know, period for you to not be able to? It release? was very discouraging because with Cash Money, uh, Hurricane Katrina came and and scratched everything, and I was so just disappointed that I didn't even want to do it over again I was just like you know what you know slim baby I'm sorry yeah uh, 
but I really, my emotions were wrapped all up in that. And to try to mimic that just, I don't think it would have came across the same way. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of got pushed on the shelf. And then I signed with TVT Records with Little John and Eastside Boys and, and uh, the Ying Yang Twins and yeah. all them. Yeah. Pitbull. Uh, I went over there with them. And my album, right when it was set to be released, they went bankrupt. <laughs> wow. And I just, I didn't want to put my money behind it to try to, distri you know, with the distribution. I just, I was like, okay, it didn't happen. It was not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a strong believer in that. If, if it's supposed to happen, it's going to happen. If you're supposed to get slapped, Somebody's gonna slap you, mm -hmm. and that's just the end of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was supposed to happen. So I'm like, they weren't supposed to happen, but it was very discouraging. And you know, even now I get so discouraged mm -hmm. when things don't happen the way that I expect them to, because I feel that God gave me a gift, and you know, I believe that my gift outshines a lot of mess that's out here today mm -hmm. and it's not like I'm ugly and it's not like I'm you know horrible or anything like that so I, I get very discouraged because I'm like why is this Miss Thing right here she ain't cute she can't sing yeah. Yeah. she ain't got nothing to give us why is she blowing up and I'm still kind of you know lingering I'm, I'm, I'm in the pool but I'm kind of lingering on the side mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And I get tired of people saying, girl, you a triple threat. You a triple threat. But yeah. then I'm like, well, what am I threatening? <laughs> <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it can be very discouraging. I'll be like, Lord, look, let me go back to school. I'm about to do something else. I'm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm about to do something else. But then I don't want to let my fans down. Mm-hmm. Because I do, at least I know I do have a million people out there that love Kiki Wyatt. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you actually led me to my, my last question, and that's, you know, you see these, these singers out here who can't really sing. They're just blowing up. They're, on the commer they're making those commercial songs on the radio. Do, you know, mm. have you ever felt pressured with the way the music has evolved to kind of to change your style at all? Because, you know, you're you're pure singer. You've got a great voice. But, you know, and, uh, well, you don't really you know, hear it on the radio I, I too much. I feel like I'm caught in a catch-22, you know why? Mm -hmm. Because I can really sing, yeah. but then when I try to do the gimmick shit stuff, yeah. people get mad at me. Yeah. Yeah. Why she got, why she going to do it? What, what she thinking? She can really sing. I don't know why she, okay, but y'all sitting here bouncing and grinding and clubbing and, mm -hmm. you know, to that, and then when I do it, you know, and then I've even heard people say she's too old for that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, honey. I was born in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, half these girls out here are older than me. Mm -hmm. Nicki Minaj, she's older than me. Yeah. Like, half these chicks out here, they're older than me. And it kind of hurts my feelings when people say that because I'm like, well, you know, I'm young too and so I can sing that stuff too but at the same time my voice is so mature yeah. you know I just try to look at it well they have voices that are just not as mature as mine mm -hmm. so when your voice is mature people automatically want to make you older than what you are plus I've been out for now you know going on nine years mm -hmm. and people tack nine years onto your age when you first came out well what they don't understand was I was young then yeah. I was a young kid yeah you know, and um, it's it's very very um, to me stuck in between a rock and a brick wall. No, I know what you mean. Well, you know, I, I hope you do keep doing what you're doing and, you know, making the kind of music you do because I know for a fact there definitely are fans who appreciate it out here. And yeah, I, well, I still like to do the little fun songs, too. So, yeah. you know, I tell my fans, you know, y'all don't get mad at me. I like to have fun, <laughs> too. I like to hear the little auto-tune sound on my voice. I like to hear the little, you know, yeah. a little stutter and stuff on there and the chopped and screwed sound. You know, yeah. I like it, too, mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. But when I'm really trying to sing you a real song and get your attention, then I'm I'm not going to play with it. I want to sing to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, but, um, 
that. Yeah, I'm 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 in a happy place now, and um, I hope that my fans can hear it on this album and see that you know I'm not in this abusive life anymore and constantly singing about stuff that I'm heard about. You know, people want to hear that you're happy too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Definitely. So I'm I'm excited about this album, and I'm also excited. Uh, I've teamed up with um, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence um, to help women who are being abused, and you know their children, and um, you know. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy about that. I feel like I'm giving back in a way. Um, you know. Yeah. There's people out there that really that really need some encouragement and I, I want to be the one to help because I, I really needed a lot of encouragement when I was going through that crap so yeah. mm-hmm. um, you know and I'm the national spokesperson for them okay. so I feel good about that okay cool um, you know that's all the questions I had is, is there anything you'd like to add you know where can people reach you and everything um, yeah twitter is uh, Kiki Wyatt Sings with an S on the end mm-hmm. um, and then my um website official website is kiki wyatt sings.com okay. cool thanks again so much for the interview i appreciate it and uh you know i'm looking forward to hearing the new album and best of luck with that all right thank you so much for your time i really appreciate you no problem take care all right you too, bye, bye.